Welcome back to the Cox Motor Park Civic Cup here at Snetterton. James Griffith on pole for this one. Lewis Rose alongside him, Ben Sharp and Jason Ballantyne, David Vincent and Bruce Winfield. Mark Rice and Daniel Reason from Rob Baker and Daniel Hobson, the race winner in race one. Aaron Sharp and David Buki next from Phil Wright, Andy Hart, Paul McHugh, David Poyser, Craig Carter and Oliver Barsby. Martin DL was a non-finisher and he starts off the back of the grid. All of the drivers with work to do including James Griffith, a reward for 10th place finish, pole position for this one, partially reverse grid, touring car style, touring car style start here on what I think is one of the, oh we've got a problem there off the grid, one of the cars very slow indeed, David Vincent is past, you can see Daniel Reason there in the 77 car just to the left of shot making progress already, superb sight these cars make as they head around Riches for the first time down in towards the hairpin Daniel Reason the man who leads them and he's still got that lead and this could be a big confidence booster for somebody starting on pole position possibly for the first time we look across you can see the 63 car of Phil Wright who is there busy trying to chase but it's James Griffith the race leader at the moment comes downhill and a great big gaggle of cars of course as the race leader you could have a a bunch of cars that are looking to swap places immediately behind you it's Ben Sharp who's gone up into second place Bruce Winfield third and then I think Jason Ballantyne in fourth position so Mark Grice is fifth looking behind Mark, uh, Jason Ballantyne at the moment Bruce Winfield you can see in white immediately ahead So this, the corner that brings them onto the back straight for the first time in race two. Ballantyne runs a little bit wide. Grice is going to try and get the momentum down the outside line. Ballantyne just coming across to defend. Not that much to defend here on the outside line. It is possible to brave it out there on the outside because it converts to the inside for the second part of the S's as they come under the bridge. But it's still James Griffith out front. Let's remember round eight of the championship. We've had six different winners in seven races are we about to get another first time winner here with James Griffith that could well be the case as Daniel Hobson looks to try and close down the inside line of Lewis Rose coming into Coram Rose has left the door open little line of uh, fluid that's been cleared up and treated by the marshals you can see there that was a good move Here's our outfield look at the on-board battle that we were chasing in the early stages of the lap. Mark Grice in the 34, busy chasing Jason Ballantyne, but as they come across the line, it's James Griffith that leads from Ben Sharp. Ben Sharp looking to improve on his best result so far this season, fifth place in round two. David Vincent in 75 from Aaron Sharp and one of the cars taking a very high wide line down into Riches. So here we are on the hairpin, which is a Wilson hairpin, named after Justin Wilson. It was originally called Montreal. And now into the left-hander Palmer, named after Jonathan Palmer, the circuit owner, who's done so much to invest and put some great facilities through. I say it a lot, I make no apology for that because I think it's a terrific advertisement for the MSV circuits and British racing in general. And uh, not only are the circuits great, but he employs some great staff, really helpful staff as well up and down the country and puts on some great racing, such as the Cox Motor Park Civic Cup, which we're watching now. And it's Griffith still out front at the head of this group of cars that are still working hard. Championship-wise, I can tell you that Rob Baker extended the championship lead. He's now on, by my maths, 138 points. Got Daniel Reeson there in the 77 car, now up into second place in the championship. He was third coming into the meeting. So Reason, with that third place in race one, moves on to 120 points, but we've got a tie now for third between Jason Ballantyne, who we've seen here, and Mark Grice, who are together. So those two are not only fighting for the position in the race, but also the championship position. Ballantyne seventh in race one, Mark Grice fourth position in race one. So plenty to play for. Daniel Hobson, who won race one, is consolidating his fifth position in the standings now on 107 points and that's all by my maths if I've missed anybody I sincerely apologize but we'll have the official points for the end of the meeting for you at the end of the program into quorum they go and for many of these drivers having their best results here at 
at uh, Snetterton. Grice over the back at the moment of Bruce Winfield. So Grice now ahead of Jason Ballantyne. And you can see Rob Baker is coming into the mix as well. Let's just stay on board with Mark Grice along centre straight, briefly uphill, little downhill run into Rich's corner, he's teeing up Winfield, this looks like a good move, a little bit too far back, realises that's the case, comes off the gas and well he knows he's got the pace and it's all about timing here and of course the lead drivers in the reverse grid or the partially reverse grid, they know that, that a win is not out of the question but it's difficult and the key thing is that you've got to survive and grab some points, that's what they're all, all looking for. David Buki in the 51 car getting stuck in there. Makes a very neat pass indeed. Buki, no slouch around here. He was on the podium in 2017 here. Mark Higginson winning race one from Martin James and David taking a podium then. So he obviously likes the circuit, knows the circuit well having been on the podium there. Mark Grice won race two incidentally last year from Martin James and Joe Lott. A few driver names there not racing with us this season. One of the things you'll notice about Civic Cup is that drivers do... Uh, a lot of drivers stay with it, of course, because you've got such great numbers here. But some drivers go away, take a break and then come back. Now we're watching Daniel Hobson busy chasing Rob Baker. So positions, of course, with the reverse grid, reverse for this race. And Hobson has got to try and work out if he's got any strong points over Rob Baker. Baker looking at Jason Ballantyne. And at the head of that group, it's Bruce Winfield who's looking fairly strong at the moment, but it's James Griffith from Ben Sharp out front. Griffith in the red car, the very distinctive machine that we saw a fair bit of in race number one. Doing a good job here of leading this one. He's got some pressure as well from Ben Sharp, so he's soaking that up well at the moment. They go through Bumhole and will head into Corum once again approaching the halfway stage of this 15-minute race here. So Ballantyne coming under pressure from Rob Baker. Rob Baker knows that every single place gained is an extra point. There is uh, Mark Grice going through, passes the 37 car Bruce Winfield on the way into Murray's corner and Winfield just had a little bit more momentum but hats off to Grice for having a go. Winfield gets the place back on the lap sheets it will show that position stayed the same but a little bit of place training between the two. Race leaders going through, here comes Winfield again, Jason Ballantyne getting into the mix here with Mark Grice. Mark Grice runner-up in the championship last year. As I think we've said a couple of times before, again, apologies for that, but it helps to put some context on for first-time viewers. Lee Deegan, last year's champion. Mark Grice second. Daniel Reeson third. Jason Ballantyne fourth. David Buki fifth in the championship. James Griffith was in sixth place last year with several podia along the way. And at the moment, looking pretty good here to hold on for the win. So we've got a battle for the lead. They're not overly close at the moment. And here comes Baker down the inside of Ballantyne at Agostini. Saw the gap, was hard on the brakes, which you have to do. On board from Jason Ballantyne, who's trying to come up. You can see the wing mirror has already been pushed in on the area motorsport car. And it's a position game for Rob Baker. Rob with one race win so far this year and three other podia. That's the consistency you need in Civic Cup racing to lead the championship. And the championship lead, 18 points. That's equivalent to a fourth place finish. And that's a very healthy lead. Uh, as we have now reached, in fact, the halfway point of the championship, which was the conclusion of race one here. Round seven of the 14 for the 2018 season. Now, thanks to Cox Motor Parts for their generous sponsorship of the championship this year. Daniel Reason in the 77 car, then second in the championship. And a little way back here, as you'd expect, on the reverse grid. And every place gained is so hard earned in these reverse grid races. I can't tell you how difficult it is to do it. And that's why the, the championship officials run to this format. It means that we get different winners. It gives people confidence. And it means that, you know, ultimately, I think if, if they were all fastest off the front, you'd probably have the same drivers winning the championship. But it just makes sure everybody gets an opportunity to do some overtaking. Different people get on the podium. I just cannot fault the race system. As they cross the line again, Griffith's still the leader. There he is turning in from Ben Sharp. Bruce Winfield in podium position in the white car, running in third place. Daniel Reason looks like... 
he is not a happy bunny at the moment. Bruce Winfield just checking his race statistics this year and uh, is potential for a first podium here. He's got Mark Grice behind him. Grice definitely one of the top seeds, of course. So Winfield, you can see in the, the white car with the black bonnet, a little bit away from the, the lead pair, but don't take any, anything away from his drive so far. Mark Grice is trying very hard indeed. Locks up going into Agostini. That's how committed Grice is. He wants to close in on the man he's chasing, Bruce Winfield. But... And he's going to have to lock up to do it and find a gap. I think he might have felt there was a little bit of a gap there. But uh, he's got Rob Baker right behind him as well in fifth place. So Rob Baker, remember, has come through from ninth on the grid in the reverse grid. So he's made up some points here, which is going to be good for him. Whether he could get any further up remains to be seen. We've got Jason Ballantyne uh, immediately behind them as well, a few lengths back. And we'll see whether Grice can have another go at Winfield but coming down into Brundle it's James Griffith still out front Ben Sharp in second Winfield here driving very well indeed coping with the pressure and he's got two of the big guns in the championship right behind him Grice joint third with, with Ballantyne he'll break that he'll go third clear here unless he outscores uh, Daniel Reason by a number of points he'll probably need to check up on that at the moment Grice running in fourth place which would be 18 points and Ballantyne in sixth position which will be four down so Grice will hold on to that the other thing we need to check on is Daniel Reason who's a couple of points down so I think possibly Grice might get back up into second place in the championship but so uh, we'll let the race officials do the maths on that uh, at the end because we've still got this great race and again just how dry it's been this summer one wheel off onto the you can't say grass now it's on the dirt you get this spray of dust that comes up I think that's Oliver Barsby parked up he's our only retiree so far the fastest lap of the race at the moment set by Rob Baker so he's on for that additional point as well which could come into play at the end of the year a solitary point for fastest lap but how crucial could that be at the end of the year Here's the race leader, James Griffith, coming down towards us. Ben Sharp second, monumental battle on for third. Make that fourth place, because at the moment, Rob Baker is the man having a look. He's all over the back, Baker, at the moment, but we've got some action here as well. And Daniel Hobson, with Daniel Reason, goes off. So Hobson's going to lose a couple of places here. He's going to rejoin, but he's lost a couple of places, and, and that is some points disappearing away there for the man who is presently second in the championship. That could ebb away from him in this race. But remember, we're just into the second half of the season now with round eight of the championship. Grice has definitely got the attention of Rob Baker here. This one is toing and froing as Grice closes up on Bruce Winfield. He has a look again, hasn't got the momentum to dive down the inside into Brundle. And he's got to be mindful of that blue car of the championship leader, Rob Baker, right with him. First and second look OK. Griffith from Sharp. Griffith has taken everything that Ben Sharp's thrown at him so far. But it's Mark Grice still there in fourth position. And Bruce Winfield has been very good value for money in this one. So Winfield coming under attack now. Having said that, Grice very quick here on that outside line and points the car on the inside line again. At Murray's and goes through. Winfield, though, is going to try and get the most of the momentum out of the car, but that was a superb manoeuvre from Mark Grice, who teed that up well. We've got a black and white um, driving standards flag going out as well. So here's the leader, Griffiths on the last lap, looking uh, Griffith looking for his first win. And then... Back in front has got Bruce Winfield, who got the run down the straight, but he's got the 34 car of Mike Grice, Mark Grice all over the back of him. Grice challenging hard once again, locks up as they go into Wilson Hairpin. He's got the inside line here, which converts to the outside at Palmer. This has been a superb race between these boys. Here's the view that Grice has had for most of it. He momentarily got into third place, but got deposed again by Winfield who's been superb, they've both been superb, Rob Baker keeping a watching brief, he wanted to get stuck in as well, this is one of the potential passing points, is it going to be on the grass, it is, he couldn't quite do it at the 
Hep in there, Agostini. Doesn't lose too much momentum, as you can see. Winfield would have had one eye on his mirrors to see whether the 34 car was going to come through. But this is an absolutely superb shot. Ride out beyond the kerbs very slightly there. I don't think they've been persistently doing that. We're not getting any timing signals to say that anyone's being penalised. So again, great driving standards for everybody in this championship here. And I know it's easy to say, well, they've got cameras and they can throw you out, but none of the drivers have consistently done track limits. They've, they've all really stuck to the track. Just proves that you can do it. So this is a really, you've got to say, an example and a demonstration for other drivers that you can stick to the track limits on the MSV circuits. So we're looking at the battle for third place and it's Bruce Winfield still there at the moment. James Griffith in red is away. Ben Sharp in second. And this the scrap for third, which again looks closer at the moment to be a battle for fourth because Rob Baker closing in on Mark Grice. He's only got Corum and then Murray's and then the run down the centre straight to do it, which is what this man has to do now coming into Murray's. Lifts a wheel in superb style and it's going to be James Griffith who becomes our seventh different winner of the season in the Cox Motor Park Civic Cup. Here's the checker. James Griffith takes the win. Ben Sharp second. Third place. Well earned for Bruce Winfield from Mark Grice. Rob Baker, the championship leader. Jason Ballantyne next of Daniel Rees, Lewis Rose. Then Dan, uh, David Vincent. Aaron Sharp completes the top ten here at Snetterton. Now here's confirmation of that top ten with Rob Baker, the championship leader, picking up another bonus point for fastest lap. That took place on lap five. 11th place goes to David Buki from Daniel Hobson, Martin DL next from Phil Wright, Andy Hart, David Poyser, Craig Carter 17th and Paul McHugh. Championship headed by Rob Baker from Mark Grice in second, Daniel Reason momentarily in second, but now down to third from Jason Ballantyne, Daniel Hobson and James Griffith in sixth.